My name is Bailey Bowden, and I'm a seventh generation resident of the town of Penobscot. I've always had an interest in sea run fisheries, and I've always enjoyed fishing. So smelts and alewives have always been a, a popular pastime for me in the spring. You know, some of my, my fondest early memories are, you know, alewives come when spring comes and the water first turns warm. So you're not afa afraid to bail into the brook and get wet. It doesn't matter if you get soaked. It's a nice, warm, sunny day. And, you know, you're, you're playing with the fish. Bailey talked to me about um, the importance of alewife and the fact that these fish that he grew up playing with and watching the run of and eating and seeing as bait for fishermen, these fish couldn't get up to survive in this system anymore. An alewife is a species of river herring. If you've ever seen a herring before, they're about 10, 12 inches long, a silvery little fish. And the cool thing about alewives is they don't just spend all their time in one spot. Right now, we're watching alewives and counting alewives coming back up a stream and we're counting them into a pond. They're coming back because they spent most of their lives in the Atlantic Ocean, swimming up and down the, the coast from the Carolinas to Canada. And the part that they're doing in their life right now is they're swimming back to the ponds that they were born in to make new babies, to start the life cycle again, and after that, those fish coming out of the eggs that are left right now are going to do that same huge journey back to the ocean. After about three years when they're mature, they'll come back into the pond and make the same swim that their parents swam before. And they can do that till they're about eight years old. This life cycle that we call it um, is something where we call the, the fish anadromous. Other species like salmon, like brook trout, like elvers make this same type of run back and forth between saltwater and freshwater and that's one of the things that makes them really special and part of our communities. What's an alewife? This is an alewife. One piece of the alewife life cycle that's really fragile, I guess I would say, is the fact that they have to swim up these small streams to get from the ocean where they can go anywhere they want. Yeah, they have to watch out for sharks and halibut and cod and everything else, but they're free to move around out there. But they're real at risk when they're coming through these small streams. They've got to get into the pond and it's pretty easy to dam up some of these small streams. And so the projects that the stream behind me that, that you can probably see is an example where they, they uh, humans put in a dam and stopped fish passage and it took community members scooping fish over that and that was the only way fish used to get in this pond before um, the fishway was restored. Myself and other individuals in town spent many hours dipping alewives over a concrete dam just so they would be able to reproduce and, and come back out. You know, 200 years ago, before all these dams were here, every stream that left a pond in Maine had alewives in it. But there can be other um, issues like beavers that can also dam up rivers. And so a lot of the volunteer work that happens is going to these beaver dams when the fish are trying to either, the adults are coming upstream or the juveniles are leaving, um, or the adults leaving, which they'll be doing in a couple weeks after they spawn, and cutting little notches into those beaver dams so fish can pass either way. And we have to do it about <clears throat> two or three times a week. Alewife streams are just kind of naturally set up for good places for a beaver dam. The Bagalus River is such a rich ecosystem. So a river right here in Brooksville, um, Castine, Penobscot, Sedgwick. There's so much wildlife in the land and water here. And helping to keep that alive and keep it thriving is been a goal for a lot of years. It made a lot of sense for me to team up with Bailey to try and figure out how my work with landowners and on conservation work in the area could help be teamed up with his and others to make it possible for fish, for these fish and others, to be able to swim from the ocean all the way up to their home ponds and back throughout the whole Bagadus River watershed. So a watershed is all that land and the streams and the ponds that all feed a river. And the Bagadus River is sort of the center of this. And there were ponds and streams that were blocked so that fish couldn't go up into those anymore and spawn. Most, most fisheries are managed by a state or a federal government. 
and they do that on a really big scale where you say, this is how many of these kind of fish we have in the Atlantic Ocean, and this is how many thing we can, think we can take out of it. And that works for some species, but for um, fisheries like alewife that have one special place they come back to every year, um, that local scale, that local piece is really important. And that's where community members have to come in because the state um, government only has a handful, probably five people that can get out to these places um, each, you know, where all these fish are running. And without people from these towns helping to count fish, take samples from fish, and um, use their understanding of their fishery that they've known since they were kids. Without those people being part of it, things wouldn't get done on this uh, scale that it's happening right now. My name's Sarah O'Malley, and I live here in Cedric, and I grew up in the area, so I've been here my whole life. And I got involved in the counting. A few years ago, I saw a poster at Tradewinds uh, looking for volunteers to help count, and I said, I want to do that because I want to see these fish. I've heard about uh, fish runs and alewives, and I knew they were in the Bagadoos. I grew up on the Bagadoos, but I'd never seen them, and I always, I just wanted to see it. So, Mike uh, met me here. It took about 30 seconds to uh, train me to count, which is actually not that hard, and I've been doing it ever since. Getting this thing that links the ocean to the fresh water and then back again, um, in this zone of, of the Bagadus River and this little estuary that is, you know, so dynamic and so, this is so exciting. This is such an exciting part of it and it's like an amazing linkage between these two kind of different worlds and th these fish bring them together. Um, and I just, I can't get over that. <laughs> it's just, yeah, it's so beautiful. I like to joke that they have food tattooed on the side of them because that's what they are. They're food to everything. Uh, the Passamaquoddy refer to them as the fish that feeds all. And it's really true from juvenile to adult, everything eats these things from insects to whales. It's really amazing. These are truly a, a forage species for, for everything. Some of the main ways people um, consume alewives are smoking them. They're really good smoked. Um, people pickle them, they can them, um, so they'll preserve them for later. And uh, they're bony, bony fish, but if you can get past the bones, they're delicious. So, so far we've done two projects out of five. We were able to take out a dam in one place and install what's called a fish way. Uh, and in the other place we did a, a number of different changes, but mainly had to deal with an old dam that was falling apart in disrepair really uh, and make it so that the water level of the pond stays the way it is but the fish can go up and down. We're trying to restore all the native fisheries, the LY fisheries in the Bagadoos River. So that's increasing the run at Walker's Pond which is a, a pretty decent run now but helping that out and then we're currently um, stocking Frost Pond and Parker Pond, and we hope to have fishways put into both of those in the near future. One really cool thing about, about these projects that are happening on the Bagadoos River is that the, the towns that were involved, that are so involved, said if we're going to have fish in our Bagadoos ponds come back, we want them to come from other Bagadoos ponds. And so we, instead of coming from some place in Augusta, um, where the state usually gets their fish. We use local volunteers, people from the communities to collect fish from Walker Pond to put those into Parker Pond and Frost Pond. So right now behind me what's going on is we're taking alewives from Walker Pond that are coming into spawn and we're pulling them out of the stream. You can see he's got a net right there of fish and we're bringing these fish into Parker Pond and um, Frost Pond, and we're stocking those ahead of some of the fishway projects that we have going on. We're taking about 600 fish for Parker Pond and about 700 fish for Frost Pond, and the babies from those, um, the eggs that hatch out of those adults will then keep coming back to those ponds and it'll start that life cycle all over again in each of those different ponds. So once we get those two uh, ponds stocked with fish and fish start returning to those, we'll have uh, the whole bag of deuce uh, run open up to, to fish again.
A lot of members of the, the Bagadoo's Alewife Committee are here, townspeople from Brooksville and Sedgwick that donate 500 hours a year, every year of their time uh, to this effort. And so they're working to, to have, let their run um, fill other runs and uh, open up passage to the Bagadoo's. It shows that there are so many other parts of the whole. We each have roles and we're each important to getting these done because these projects are so complicated. It's not just a bit of construction on the ground, but you have to find the money for that and you have to get the landowners okay with that. And you have to then keep volunteers counting the fish to prove to the grants that their money achieved what they wanted to do. So there's so much that goes into these projects that they're only doable with a whole lot of people, each playing their role and coming together to make it possible. It's amazing how many of these values overlap among different organizations. So this has brought together a broad range of, of group with different um, thoughts and ideas to form a collaborative. So we've we can all work together and make these projects happen. People ask why folks are doing this, why the volunteers are doing this, and I always say, you know, when, when you're a fishing town and you have every year around the, almost the exact same day, you've got hundreds of thousands of fish swimming from the ocean into your town and it's bait and it's food and it's food for everything around you're gonna be pretty connected to it and you're gonna do what it takes to keep that around. And so that's what I think a lot of this is about.